So contig is a math game where you have to use multiplication, subtraction, addition, division, and all the things to g cross out the numbers and try to get more points than the other person. The first one to 15 wins. So what kind of skills do you think you need to play contig? Strategy, and you need to know your facts, of course. And yeah, that's all, I, that's all I use, just strategy, and I know my facts. So the students roll three dice, and they can do anything they want with those dice in terms of using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to end up with a number on the board. So for every number they cross out, they get one point. And if they touch another square, either diagonally, horizontally, or vertically, they can earn bonus points based on how many squares they're touching. So contig is short for contiguous you know, which means connected. And so you're really trying to maximize your value by finding just that right number that's gonna get you the points that you need. And so it's the first to 15 points wins the game. This has been going on a long time. So this year is my, supposed to be my 25th tournament. COVID wiped out my 2020 tournament. So it's the 24th one I've run. But yeah, my first champion was crowned in 1999. And really, I, ha I can't take full credit for this. Um, when I first started teaching, there was a wonderful uh, fourth grade teacher at Jefferson named Andy Tennis. And she was a veteran teacher, and she sort of took me under her wing early in my career. And one day, she just threw me this game, and she said, you know, uh, my kids have loved playing this game. It's great for practicing your math facts. It's great for strategy. The kids just love it in their downtime. Okay, so we started playing it in here and the kids really did take a liking to it. And then that got me thinking, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty competitive guy myself. I'm, I mean, I'm a March Madness fan, I'm a tennis coach, brackets are part of my life. I think I can do something with this. And so that's when I turned it into this big tournament at the end of the year and it's really taken on kind of a life of its own at the end of the year. I tell the kids we practice all year for it. So I mean, they're playing Contig all year long. And then, so the tournament is really just the, I sort of like the icing on the cake and a really a great way to end the year. And we need to win with dignity. We need to lose gracefully and, and, and those kind of life lessons too. So I do make them shake hands and wish each other well before the match starts. I make them shake hands after it's done and they come report the score together to the board so it's not one person sort of celebrating that they won and leaving the other person at their seat. Both people come up. Um, it's really I really feel like that part of it is as important as maybe anything else that we're doing is to teach them how to win and how to lose. So I have a record of everybody who's won my tournament and the winner will get the big board here. Uh, that's probably their big prize. I do have some other prizes that I give them and some certificates and stuff, but really the big board is the big one. Uh, just I have kids tell me I still have that on my wall from when I won your tournament, you know. Um, so it, I, I try to make it, uh, I try to make the championship match a really big deal. We played on paper through the whole tournament. Um, but when we get to the title match, I've always thought that I, it should be a really, a really something special. And so I, do, I did a virtual version of this. There, there's a smart board notebook that has virtual dice and they can play on the board and I'll have the kids up in front and the whole class gets to watch what's going on. And we use my scoreboard over here to keep score and we really pump it up. And so it's a great way to spend the first hour on the last day of school, crowning a champion of the tournament and all of them get to watch what's going on and it's really hard for them because they're they're wanting to play and you're like ooh 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 you know they and I always tell them the audience has got to stay quiet you can't give it away and they're really pretty good about that. You have to know your facts of multiplication, division, subtraction, but it's also luck of getting the dice numbers. Um. Before you make your move, you always want to check all your options to see if you want to get a higher number. I sent an email to several of my former champions and I got several responses back from people who said it was the best thing that they did in fourth grade. And so I guess I just hope that the, all the previous students I've had have enjoyed it and then the ones that um, are coming up have something to look forward to. So that's my wish.